Yeah, well, let's see what happens if black uh, takes the c4 pawn. I mean, not the most popular variation for black, but I mean, still playable, and uh, some some chess players do that. By the way, um, this is something very unusual, untypical for the right to opening, because uh, like the whole system will be totally different. First of all, we will not play g3, we will not fianchetto our bishop. Our, our goal will be to take the pawn back. So position will be, um, let's say, different. Okay, but you know, you just, there are just a few variations, um, and you, see, you will see when you learn them, you will learn the whole line, so just... Yeah, don't worry. Okay, so let's get started. Knight f3, d5, c4, and then d takes c4 in the second move. Yeah, so accept it. Um, now what to do? I mean, our goal is to take the c4 pawn back. If we play g3, it will be difficult to take it. So, uh, I think that the best move for white is e3. I mean, don't get me wrong, g3 is possible, but later there are some tricky variations for white. So, in my opinion, better option for you is just to go for e3 and to take the c4 pawn. So, you see, the setup will be totally different. We don't have g3, bishop, g2. We don't have fianchetto there. Um, so, yeah. Bishop takes c4 is the threat. Now there are uh, a few possible variations for black. By the way, just to let you know, the main move is knight f6 or e6, basically the same. Um, we will do that at the end. Now let's see some unusual um, responses. And let's start with b5. Because b5 is logical move, although not the best, black wants to protect the c4 pawn. Um, and after b5, I mean, the, the most logical move for us is just a4. That's the best move. We want to break that pawn chain and to win the c4 pawn back. He cannot play a6 because after a takes b5, he cannot take back. So, I, again, I mean, it's it's already uncomfortable position for black. Um, he plays c6. A takes b5, c takes b5, and then let's play knight c3 with tempo. Again, a6 impossible because knight simply takes b5. So let's say that he play bishop to d7. You know, he, he is still a pawn up and he is trying just to protect that pawn, that's it. After bishop d7, the best move for white is knight to e5. And one interesting thing is, is, is happening. I mean, there is queen f3 threat. And after that, the rook on a8 is hanging. And there is checkmate threat on f7. So, for example, let's imagine that black play knight f6. Knight f6 is, by the way, a blunder. Because after queen f3, the rook on a8 cannot be protected. A very very dangerous threat the best move for black is knight to c6 but then white can simply take uh, the pawn back so knight takes d7 the bishop queen takes and then knight simply takes b5 so right now material is even and white will also take this pawn so white will be at least a pawn up that's it i mean Pretty much, I mean, simple. Um, don't don't worry. He cannot protect that c4 pawn forever after 95. I mean, he will lose that pawn soon. Um, yeah. So again, so c4 is the second move. He took there e3, b5. Of course, a4. Then c6. A takes, c takes, and then knight c3. What will happen if he push the pawn? before to attack the knight um, I mean this is I think one of the simplest variation just queen a4 check bishop d7 maybe and then queen takes b4 and again the c4 pawn cannot be protected cannot be saved so white will be a pawn up
So bishop, uh, sorry, yeah, this whole idea with c6 is not good. Um, instead, black could do maybe this before. So to sacrifice the c4 pawn, he he knows that he has to give uh, that pawn, so he he does that immediately by playing b4, and with this move he prevents knight a3 or knight c3 so he doesn't allow knight a3 or knight c3 normal natural development so it makes sense to play b4 but again after bishop c4 what is problem for black i mean these pawns are awkwardly placed especially the b4 pawn they are not connected somehow black already has some some holes and weaknesses on the queen side so i think that this is also uh, not so good variation for him after bishop c4 he play e6 then short castle knight f6 and then there is a good move for white a5 we try to break coordination between those three pawns so after a5 black cannot play this move a7 a5 to support the b4 pawn that's the goal a6 maybe for him also if he feel kept to his bishop on b7 then a6 will be the next move and then this bishop has almost nowhere to go so uh, for that reason, black play a6, because when he play bishop b7, his bishop will be safe there. Then let's play d3, bishop b7, and then let's play e4. Bishop b7, and then our bishop goes to e3. White is uh, better. White will play knight to d2, maybe rook to c1, later knight b3. c5 square is weakened we will jump there um, we will develop our queen here rook fd1 just uh, accent is on normal development and um, like by playing normal moves you will see just many times something will happen some some uh, uh, you will create some threats just by playing some normal moves all of a sudden you will see oh oh my god i have something concrete or something like that so you know just just play normally develop all your pieces and you you will have something concrete don't worry yeah like this variation is you see bad for black um, he simply cannot save the c4 upon a 3-3 so b5 variation um, then just play a4 that's the point what will happen if he tries to protect the c4 pawn by playing bishop to e6 I, I think better definitely better move than than b5 playable move but as you see this bishop on e6 is awkwardly placed so he will need he need to spend some some tempies later to to move that bishop away because he need to develop some other pieces you know so sure not not so bad but uh, yeah i mean of course that he could have played something better than bishop e6 so what to do let's play knight to a3 we want to take the pawn in the next move and then he simply he simply uh, gives up he doesn't want to protect the c4 pawn because there is no way to do that he just develop his pieces and now it's a very interesting moment with which piece to take with the bishop or with the knight uh, if you take with the bishop playable definitely you will be slightly better for sure but then you fix his problem this bishop will be off the board his light square bishop from e6 now he can simply play e6 bishop e7 short castle later c5 knight c6 and his position is very decent i mean he is slightly worse because he's black but anyway he has good play so we don't want to take with our bishop because we don't want to simplify position instead we will play we will take there with the knight i mean now it's it's tricky for black if he takes the knight in order to play e6 then we will have bishop pair you know just white is already better and then after e6 just just play normally bishop e7 b3 castling bishop b2 rook c1 this pawn will go to d3 or d4 i mean i i, I like to play d3 e4 because i don't want to block diagonal for a dark square bishop and white is uh, white has a bishop pair and white is certainly better so that's why i like knight takes c4 so if black takes here then 
white has bishop pair. If black doesn't take there, he need to develop his pieces differently, like this, g6, bishop, g7, because the, the e6 bishop blocks the e7 pawn. So g6. Uh, and then, I mean, he will play bishop g7. His bishop, his dark square bishop will be very strong. Let's do something about that. Our bishop is, on the other hand, stuck on c1. So let's fianchetto our dark square bishop, b2. Bishop g7, bishop goes to b2. Short castle, and let's complete our development. Bishop goes to e2. Then the best move definitely for black is bishop to d5. I mean, this bishop blocks the e pawn. It's difficult for black now to organize his pieces. This is this is probably the best move. His bishop cannot be attacked right now. So he does this because he wants to play c5. He wants to play e6. This knight will go to d7 or c6. So this move, bishop d5, is quite typical. Uh, short castle for white. And then maybe c5. White should just play normally. Uh, positionally. That's the whole point about the Reti opening. You want to, to, let's say, smother your opponent. You want to play positional chess. So let's play rook c1. Knight bd7 for black. I mean, if you play knight to c6, then his bishop won't have this c6 square, evacuation square. So that means that if we attack the bishop, then it, it has to go back to e6, you know, so knight bd7 is more elastic move for black. And then let's play d3, and then let's play e4 with tempo. This bishop would probably have to go back to c6, but, you know, this diagonal is, is blocked. So I, 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 I think that white is already uh, better, just... Um, sure, black position is not bad, but somehow his pieces are not well um, coordinated. Especially this bishop on d5, it looks nice, you know, but it's it's there, it's in the center, and I think that it is too vulnerable in the center. For example, our next move, e4, will be with tempo, because this bishop is on d5. Um, so as you see, I mean, playable variation for black, but white also has a very, very good play. So what to do after bishop e6? Let's play knight a3, then knight f6 for black. Then knight takes c4, not bishop takes c4, because position will be much simpler and black will have great chances to equalize. So knight takes c4, then g6 for black. If he if he takes the the the, uh, the knight, then that's great. That's great. Just take there and you are already better because of the bishop pair. So g6, b3, bishop g7, bishop b2. Bishop e2, castling, rook c1, and then d3 followed by e4. There is one more sub variation to check. What will happen if he doesn't do this? He doesn't want to fianchetto his bishop, instead, he does this. Bishop to d5 right away, and then his next move will be e7, e6. He wants to develop his bishop, his dark square bishop, maybe to e7, for example. Then let's do the same. Again, b3, bishop b2. Our bishop on c1 is inactive. It's doing nothing. I mean, let's let's try to develop it. b3, e6 now. Bishop b2. Bishop e7, bishop e2. Castle, castle. c5 for black. And then again, rook c1. Just normal, normal play. Knight bd7, and basically again the same. d3 and e4 with... Uh, slight advantage for white. So what you need to do here after playing e4, this bishop will probably go to uh, c6. Again, just normally develop your pieces. For example, queen c2, rook fd1, and then at some point you should play, for example, d4. Or or uh, when this bishop is, uh, goes to, to c6, then at some point you can even play knight e5, knight takes, knight takes, and maybe you can take the bishop on six, c6. So you have a few interesting ideas here, but basically you're all, uh, already better. Just play normally and you will increase your advantage.
yeah okay we are like done with these two variations with b5 and bishop to e6 what else black could do he could play something like bishop to g4 i mean he wants to to develop his bishop before he play e6 mm, possible move not the best but again i, I mean playable bishop takes c4 then black has to play e6 why he has to play e6 because for example if he play knight f6 this is a big mistake by the way white has this tactical block bishop f7 and after king f7 there is double attack like this knight e5 and white is much much better almost winning here so e6 is the move and you see that his bishop left the c8 square it left defense of the b7 pawn. let's try to exploit that and in that sense let's play queen to b3 uh, there are two threats <clears throat> white is threatening to play queen takes b7 and to play knight e5 to attack the bishop g4 uh, let's see what will happen if black play queen to c8 queen to c8 is um, it's a logical move, although not the best, but let's see what will happen. Of course, knight e5 then, bishop goes to f5, for example, and then knight goes to c3. Knight f6, and then d4. Bishop e7, and now very important move for white, try to remember it. This pawn goes to f3. e4 move is unavoidable, and after playing e4, white will have great, great center. Knight bd7 for black, e4, bishop g6, and then short castle. What is white planning to do? Of course, to play bishop to e3, rook from a1 to c1, and rook from f1 to d1, and white has perfect setup. On the other hand, black pieces are not so good. This bishop on g6 is restricted, and it's very difficult for black to activate that bishop by the way i mean usually people make a mistake and they take with this knight the bishop on g6 of course that is wrong our knight on e5 is much stronger than the bishop on g6 don't don't take it so just keep that tension that pressure in the center and just try to keep as many pieces on the board as possible so yeah after a short castle that was the last move white is already much better Okay, so queen c8 after queen b3 is not so good move for black. Instead, it's better for him to take the knight on f3. To, to try to eliminate our potentially strong piece. Let's take there with the pawn. G takes f3. And then b6 for black. That's, that's the main move. It's better to play b6 now than to play queen to c8. b6 and then f4. Also typical move. And then we will see why we do this. Uh, g6 for black. Good move. Good move. He wants to fianchetto the bishop. And at the same time to prevent this potentially dangerous f5 move. Now there is fantastic move uh, for white. Um, fantastic positional move. It's not tactics or something like that. White should play bishop to f1. Why? Because this diagonal, h1, a diagonal, is much, much better for our light square bishop than a2, g8 diagonal. On this diagonal, this bishop has nothing. So let's play bishop f1. Bishop g7, bishop g2, c6 for black, and then knight c3, knight e7, d4. Short castle for black, short castle for white, knight d7, and then you should know how, how to develop your piece is the best way to do that, especially this bishop on c1. It's doing nothing there, it's restricted, and uh, our, our goal is to develop it. Let's play rook d1 first to protect the d4 pawn, because after rook c8, for example... By the way, black wants to get out of this, this pin on h1 a diagonal. Why did we play rook d1? Uh, because to protect the d4 pawn, we will play e4 in this move. And now the d4 pawn is well protected. And the next move is bishop e3. 
white is already better. I think according to computer 1.5, something like that. I mean, that's that's a very, very good position for white, and white has excellent chances to win this game. Okay. So you see that bishop g4 variation for black isn't so good. Again, let's repeat what happened. So knight f3 was played, d5, c4, d takes c4, and then e3. Unusual move for Duretti opening because usually uh, we play g3, bishop g2, we fianchetto our light square bishop. Um, yeah, then we analyzed three interesting variations b5, not so good because white can just play a4. Um, bishop e6 is interesting, but later we, we, we saw that white can gain advantage. So knight a3 and knight takes c4 is something you should do. And later b3, bishop e2, bishop e2, castle, and so on. And we analyzed, um, we analyzed bishop g4 variation. In that case, let's take. He has to play e6. And then let's just play queen b3 with double threat to take the b7 pawn and to play knight e5. Basically, it's, it's definitely the best uh, for him to take the knight, then g takes, b6, and then let's play f4 and bishop f1, g2, mother. Okay, later you know what to do. Now let's see other variations. Variation, actually, because um, these two variations are very similar, the same almost. So knight f3, d5, c4, d takes c4, and then after e3, two most popular and, and best moves for black are e6 or knight f6. Let's analyze them. 